Hello everyone, my name is Valeria Perez and today's presentation will be over the lipid emulsion Omegavin, which was FDA approved in 2018. At the end of this presentation, you should be able to, one, understand the need for Omegavin, two, review trials that led to the approval of Omegavin, and three, discuss how to properly use Omegavin in practice. First, some background. In the United States, patients dependent upon parenteral nutrition, or PN, receive parenteral fat emulsions composed of soybean oils. Lipids are necessary in parenteral nutrition dependent patients due to their high calorie value and essential fatty acid content. However, intravenous lipid emulsions have been implicated in predisposing patients to parenteral nutrition associated liver disease which is abbreviated as PNALD. It's also known as PNAC, P-N-A-C, where that stands for Parental Nutrition Associated Cholestasis. There is growing evidence implicating soybean-derived emulsions in the pathogenesis of PNALD. Soybean-derived lipid solutions contain phytosterols, high concentrations of pro-inflammatory omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acids, and low concentrations of antioxidants. Phytosterols are thought to have a deleterious effect on biliary secretion. Accumulation of lipids in the hepatic cup for cells may further impair liver function. Therefore, the higher the amount of phytosterols, the higher the risk of PNALD. So with this logic, a low concentration of phytosterols in a lipid emulsion would likely serve as a solution. This is where omegavin comes in. So as demonstrated at, in this table, intralipid, which is in the orange box, is 100% soybean oil and has a high concentration of phytosterols. Smoth lipid in the purple box, which is a combination of soybean, medium chain dry glycerides, olive, and fish oils, has less phytosterol concentration than in intralipid. But when you take a look at omegavin in the pink box, which is 100% fish oil, it has the lowest concentration of phytosterols. There are some concerns when using IV lipid emulsions, and Omegavin is no exception. Use caution in those with egg allergies, hyperlipidemia, hypertriglyceridemia, acute pancreatitis, some secondary metabolic complications that may arise with the use of IV lipid emulsions like Omegavin are hyperglycemia, hypoglycemia, hyperbilirubinemia, hyperlipidemia, cholestasis, refeeding syndrome, sepsis, and hypertriglyceridemia. I want to go over a few trials that led to the approval of Omegavin. In 2013, Prem Kumar et al.'s prospective observational study showed that the use of Omegavin in 47 of 57 infants with median gestational age of 28 weeks and median conjugated bilirubin level of 7.5 had a resolution of cholestasis at a median day of 35. The 10 non-survivors showed a trend towards being more premature than those who survived at birth. In 2016, Lee et al. explored two case reports where two infants with advanced intestinal failure associated liver disease showed reversal of cholestasis by switching from SMOF lipid to Omegavin monotherapy. In case one, an 11th month old girl developed direct bilirubinemia at three months and the patient's lipid emulsion was switched to Omegavin. A decrease in direct bilirubin was observed after 60 days on Omegavin and the intestinal failure associated liver disease was completely resolved after 90 days. In case two, a one month old boy that could not tolerate PO feeds and kept on full parental nutrition 
had elevated direct bilirubin and developed intestinal failure associated liver disease at five weeks. Omegavin treatment was initiated at five months. Direct bilirubin rose to eight during the first month on omegavin, then a gradual decrease in direct bilirubin was observed, and after five months on omegavin, it was resolved. Another case report from 2016 by String et al. explored an infant born with short bell syndrome requiring long-term parenteral nutrition that developed PNAC. Then given subsequent administration of fish oil lipid emulsion, omegavin. After four months of omegavin, the cholestasis successfully was resolved. More recently, after FDA approval of omegavin, in 2020, Gura et al. compared omegavin with soybean oil lipid emulsion and found that omegavin recipients consistently had higher growth measures over time compared with the soybean oil lipid emulsion recipients. Therefore, the study concluded that although the results were not statistically significant, they found a small clinical significance of how children with intestinal failure associated liver disease who received omegavin had similar growth but had fewer metabolic abnormalities compared to those who received soybean oil lipid emulsion, which is beneficial. But as far as the studies that we just went over, it is very limited data, and most of them are observational or case reports, so be aware of that. So Megavan is FDA approved for a source of calories and fatty acids in pediatric patients with parenteral nutrition associated cholestasis, PNAC. The limitations of use are, it's not indicated for the prevention of PNAC. It has not been demonstrated that Omegavan prevents PNAC in parenteral nutrition dependent patients. It has not been demonstrated that the clinical outcomes observed in patients treated with omegavin are a result of the omega-6, omega-3 ratio of the product. So a little bit about how and when to administer omegavin. It comes in a dosage form of an injectable emulsion in a 5 gram per 50 mil or a 10 gram per 100 mil the concentration in either one is 0.1 gram per mil in a single dose. For infusion into a central or peripheral vein, it may be infused directly from the bottle or admixed in a parenteral nutrition container. Make sure though that prior to administration, correct severe fluid and electrolyte disorders and measure serum triglycerides to establish a baseline level. Initiate dosing as soon as direct or conjugated bilirubin levels are 2 mg per deciliter or greater, and patients are expected to be parenteral nutrition dependent for at least two weeks. The recommended dosage does depend on age, energy expenditure, clinical status, body weight, tolerance, ability to metabolize, and consideration of additional energy sources given to the patient. The recommended daily dose, and it's also the maximum dose, in pediatric patients is one gram per kilogram per day. The recommended duration for infusion is between eight and 24 hours, depending on the situation. Administer omegavin until the direct or conjugated bilirubin levels are less than 2 mg per deciliter or until the patient no longer requires parenteral nutrition. The manufacturer listed contraindications are known hypersensitivity to fish or egg protein or any of the active ingredients or excipients severe hemorrhagic disorders, and severe hyperlipidemia 
or severe disorders of lipid metabolism with serum triglycerides greater than 1,000 milligrams per deciliter. The warnings and precautions that you should be aware of when using Omegavin are the risk of death in preterm infants due to pulmonary lipid accumulation, deaths in preterm infants after infusion of IV soybean oil based lipid emulsions have been reported in literature, and the autopsy findings included intravascular fat accumulation in the lungs. However, the risk with Omegavin is unknown at this point. So monitor for signs and symptoms of pleural or pericardial effusion. Next, hypersensitivity reactions. Monitor for signs and symptoms of those occurring. And if a reaction does occur, discontinue infusion. Lastly, the risk of infections, fat overload syndrome, refeeding syndrome, and hypertriglyceridemia Monitor for signs and symptoms and also monitor the laboratory parameters. There is a risk of aluminum toxicity, increased risk in patients with renal impairment, including preterm infants. Um, so it's important to monitor and do laboratory tests. Routine laboratory monitoring is recommended, uh, including monitoring for essential fatty acid deficiency. The most common adverse drug reactions are vomiting, agitation, bradycardia, apnea, and viral infections. There are some drug interactions with omegavin and antiplatelet agents and anticoagulants. As a result, prolonged bleeding time has been reported in patients taking antiplatelet agents or anticoagulants and oral omega-3 fatty acids. Periodically monitor bleeding time in patients receiving omegavin and concomitant antiplatelet agents or anticoagulants. So to bring this information all together, the place in therapy to use omegavin is in pediatric patients with parenteral nutrition associated cholestasis when direct or conjugated bilirubin levels are 2 mg per deciliter or greater and are expected to be parenteral nutrition dependent for at least two weeks. The daily dose and maximum dose in pediatric patients is one gram per kilogram per day, and the recommended duration for infusion is between eight and 24 hours. Administer Omegavin until direct or conjugated bilirubin levels are less than two milligrams per deciliter or until the patient no longer requires parenteral nutrition. Lastly, these are my references. I hope that this presentation has helped you with proper use of Omegavin. If there are any questions, please leave a comment down below and I will respond. Thank you.